Now, as I said in the previous section, this time we're talking about audio, we're talking about sound quality, because sound quality is so, 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 so important. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to the point whereby I would assert that sound is more important than video. If you get the sound wrong, people don't understand the words. Even if you think that the words are understandable, you can trick yourself because if you know what the words are supposed to be, like you just said them, um, it's a lot easier to understand. But someone who doesn't know what you're talking about has a, will have a lot more trouble understanding. Now, fortunately, there is one golden rule, which is the simple golden rule of good audio recording. And that is the simple one is get the microphone as close as possible to the speaker. So in this case, I'm wearing this little Lavalier microphone here, which is picking up the sound. This little microphone is, is close to me, and therefore it's producing a reasonably clear, intelligible sound. Even though I'm not actually in a very good room for sound recording, um, it should still be okay because this little microphone will do a, a great job. Now, this little microphone cost me $12. The, the lead that it's on is only about this long, so I had to buy an extension cord, which cost $13. The extension cord was more than the microphone. So for 25 bucks, I've got a little sound recording set up here. I'm recording on an iPhone with this um, cable running through to here. So it's as cheap as dirt. Um, it's my iPhone and it's 25 bucks worth of cable. How could you go wrong? You can buy a more expensive microphone such as the Rode, video mic, the Rode um, iPhone mic, which will set you back $60 or so on Amazon. Um, whether it will produce a better result than this, I don't know, very likely, but this is good enough and it's 25 bucks. How can you go wrong? Um, if I had a lot more money to spend, I'd have a radio mic so that I wouldn't have to have a cable connecting me and the camera. Now I have a cable that runs down here across the floor and up to the camera. Um, it can be a bit inconvenient at times. A radio mic is more convenient, but um, a radio mic is gonna set me back a lot more money and this works. So if it works, and it produces good sound, and it doesn't cost a lot of money, I think we're away laughing. If I had, uh, if I wanted a, a more sophisticated level of sound, I'd probably have to go to something like this. This is a short shotgun microphone. This is worth $1,000. This is a great microphone. I love this microphone. It's, because it's a short shotgun, it picks up sound over there, and it rejects sound from the sides, so it doesn't need to be quite as close to the speaker as a regular microphone to pick up a clear sound. But we're talking about $1,000, and my brief here is to be operating on the lowest possible budget, and this is producing good enough sound. This would make a better sound, but I'd have to do a lot more work. Also, it requires a Canon plug, and that's not gonna fit into my iPhone, which is gonna mean that I'm gonna have to record sound separately, and it's all becoming a bigger drama, and what we want what we want to do achieve here is easy, simple sound recording. So here's your simple, easy answer. Get one of these, 25 bucks, can't go wrong. If you can't get one of these and you're stuck with the onboard microphone in the camera and you're using a camcorder, here's one trick you can do to try and improve things. Zoom it wide and bring the, mic bring the camera closer, which means that the microphone is closer. If you zoom it telephoto and put the camera further away and you've got the same size shot, uh, you'll get you'll get much worse sound. Now, purists amongst you will say that's not how it should be done. The, mark, the camera should be a certain distance to get the, the best perspective, the most flattering perspective on the subject's face. But clear sound trumps the perspective on the subject's face. Clear sound is the thing you want to aim for at the expense of anything else. So zoom wide, bring the camera closer. Some rooms sound better than other rooms. Now, for, ex for example, this room that we're here in here, this is actually a big, large, reverberant space. But fortunately, with this little Lavalier microphone, uh, it's so close to my voice that it's minimizing the echo. So you'll hear a little bit of reverberation uh, on my voice, but not too much. If I was using the camera microphone, well, it'd be a lot worse. So it would sound like this. Now, I've, I've unplugged the microphone, so you should be hearing a much reduced uh, sound quality. So rather than the little the value mic, you're hearing the mic off the camera. So there's another reason why the tie clip microphone is really good. The further away the microphone is, the more influence the room has on the sound. The worst shape of room, acoustically, is a cube. 
a cube will resonate at, at the same frequency between each wall and the ceiling and uh, it produces the, the least satisfying result. And reflective surfaces such as this one um, that the sound can bounce off are another problem. That, 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 so a reflective cube is the worst possible shape you can have. Now what's the bet that your office or an office that you want to record an interview in is pretty close to a cube and has lots of reflective surfaces? That's Offices tend to be really poor spaces for interviews for that reason. If you've got a lot of books on the walls and a lot of stuff in the office, that can help minimise things. Uh, but what really, really helps is soft furnishings, drapes, uh, carpet, um, lots, of ref lots of sound dampening things. So uh, often a living room can be a good place to record in because there, there tend to be lots of soft furnishings, drapes and so forth. If you've got drapes in the office, uh, closing the drapes might make it dark, but on the other hand it might actually improve the sound, depending on if, you know, if they're heavy drapes. If they're light drapes it's not really going to work. They've got to be big heavy drapes to, to soak up the sound energy. One thing that can destroy any sound recording is wind. Wind will wind will get into the microphone and you'll, what you'll hear is um, and it, it, it's just plain awful, it's plain bad, you can't understand the words. Of course that's the main criteria for, for us for sound recording, is not whether it's a full range of frequencies and how natural it sounds, it's can you understand the words. So wind tends to be, um, wind will destroy a sound recording. If you're outside on a windy day, you might try and find a place that was shaped, that was in the lee of the wind. Uh, one side of the building will be worse than another. If you're in the middle of a rugby field, you could try turning so that you're facing um, away from the wind. Uh, that might help, but it's always going to be a problem. So try and avoid the wind. Uh, try and avoid outside for that reason.